Good afternoon, everybody. Mike Evans here with back to school tip number four. Now, before we get into that, I just want to do a quick review of the three previous tips that we provided. If you missed it, you still have a little bit of time to make things happen, but hopefully you've already been implementing some of these. Now, our first tip a couple weeks ago was we wanted to make sure that we were already establishing healthy sleep patterns, making sure that kids had enough sleep, they were already starting to go to bed a little earlier, already waking up a little earlier, setting those bedtime patterns to prepare them for sleep, and hopefully finding an amount of sleep that matches up with their natural sleep cycle rhythms. After that, our second tip, we talked about a healthful diet, things that are going to help them, not with necessarily weight loss, but cutting out sugars and certain types of fats that would help them actually regulate emotions, feel more energetic, and just have a healthy diet to provide them the fuels that they're going to need. Thinking takes up a tremendous amount of energy. Tip number three was making sure that they feel comfortable communicating with you, and hopefully that's something you do every day, but especially now it is more important as they start to face their stresses going back to school and over the first month or so of school, as they find a way to settle in with new friends, new routines, new fashions, new lessons. We wanna make sure that we're never discounting what they say to us, acknowledge how they feel, and then provide examples of how to get past it. So tip number four, we wanna make sure that we are continually finding ways to build up a child's self-confidence. Confidence is one of the root factors to every other type of success. So whether we're trying to build empathy, which is so important in the world today, or you're trying to entice your child to try something new or to just face challenges. You know, sometimes we have to teach them it's okay not to know. Confidence is what's going to allow them to do it. Now, we have a saying in my school that competence breeds confidence. So we wanna make sure, first of all, that we're finding some inner talent that they have. Now, this could be enrolling them in a new class or um, even a new sport. And a lot of times, parents, especially in my business, will say to me, oh, you know, the school year is just starting and we wanna make sure that they're gonna settle in and be okay before we start, whatever it is. And it's an awesome sentiment. However, it's actually the opposite that's true and we wanna make sure that we're finding something that the child is going to be good at, perhaps separate from school, that allows them to feel competent. So in my case, I teach martial arts and I design my program so that very quickly the child starts to feel like they know what they're doing. Now, of course, at a beginner's level, they might not know what I know, but they right away feel comfortable with their ability in class. And the more comfortable they feel, the more competent they feel. And the more competent they feel, the more they present themselves in a confident manner. They're more willing to stand up, more willing to make eye contact, more willing to engage in active conversation, especially within the learning environment. Now, it doesn't have to be martial arts. There are a bunch of great activities out there, but we want to find something that doesn't induce necessarily stress in these lives, at least at those beginner levels. We want them to have something positive that's building their level of confidence. So now whether they have to take tests, face bullies, or just worry about whether the kids are gonna like them in a new school, having a little bit of confidence will make all of those things less of a concern, partially because of the viewpoint that the child will have on it, but also just the way they present themselves will make some of those things go away. Uh, we wanna make sure that we're finding positive role models. Now, very often kids look up to their heroes, mom, dad, baseball player, football player, whatever it is. But we wanna make sure we're finding role models and you can't choose your child's role model beyond a certain point. You know, They have to find some sort of connection to even just a vision of themselves with that role model or in that role model's role. Um, so we wanna be very careful about the people we present, making sure that, yeah, maybe they're a great athlete, but are they beating their wives, doing drugs, breaking the laws, you know, that's probably not the best role model. We want role models who perhaps have faced challenges, maybe even challenges similar to the child, and who have succeeded in spite of those challenges, or sometimes because of those challenges. Um, you know, I came up in a military family, so I knew a lot of veterans and stuff, and especially nowadays with all the wars that we've had, we see a lot of veterans coming back with disability, and that's something that I kind of involved my daughter in a few years ago, showing her that, look, these people have faced not only war, but the things they bring home from war, or sometimes, unfortunately, the things or body parts that they leave behind in war, yet these people are 
committed to achieving. So it was a great role model opportunity for her. But even better than that, uh, and especially in my martial arts program, we believe a lot in near peer mentoring. And this serves two purposes. First of all, the kids will relate more closely to a near peer than they do even to you. Uh, they'll have that closer bond and kinship of still being a child, whereas you are the adult and the authority figure. And depending on their age and stage of development, you might actually be out of their role model uh, venue for a little while uh, because you're an adult and an authority figure. So finding healthy near peer uh, role models that are two, three, four, five years older even, uh, it allows the kid to see that, look, I can be a kid and still do these things, still face these challenges, still succeed, just like my friend did. Working the opposite way, becoming a near peer role model, sometimes takes the pressure off the older child to have to relate to a ch another child who's five or six years younger than them. I wouldn't go much below that, uh, but four, five, six years younger than them, if I'm trying to build something up in a child, allowing them to be the leader or the mentor for somebody younger is far less stressful than trying to keep up to my expectations as the, the authority figure. And then, of course, every day, remind them how special they are. And don't go overboard with it. There's no reason to be fake because kids can see right through it if we're just finding ways to say, oh, you know, you are the most wonderful bed maker I've ever, you know, the kids see through that. Find honest ways to praise them, but make sure we're praising the things that we're looking for. So even though we want to tell the kids they did a good job, we want to make sure we are praising the character trait behind it. Let them relate themselves to that character trait. So instead of saying, oh, I'm somebody that did a good job once, it was great. When I can praise them and say, hey, that showed a lot of good responsibility when you did that good job. Now they will start to relate themselves as being somebody who has good responsibility or good confidence or good bravery or good courage, whatever it happens to be that you're praising. And it's a far more authentic way to praise a child so that they actually believe it, all right? So now with all these things, we wanna make sure that in every circumstance we are building up the child. We all know that in life, you know, things break us down far more than they build us up. And in the long game, we know that even those things that break us down can become the stepping stones to success. Our key is to equip and provide our children with the healthful habits, including sleep and diet and fitness and learning to be able to face these things with confidence. If we can give them that, they're gonna do fine with everything else. So I hope you got something out of this and don't forget, we do have a new group that we're going to be dropping a lot of information in. We start a new parent skills program uh, beginning next week. So if you'd like to join that group, you can click right on the groups tab on this page and you'll see it's parent skills by Talk With Mike. Just add yourself there and we'll start chatting and seeing what we can do for one another. Have a great day and I wish your kids the best of luck in the beginning of the school year.